A few weeks into the Elon Musk takeover at Twitter and it's been a constant barrage of bad news. We can't remember the last time we heard a positive report from the social network. And apparently, Musk's life is about to get a lot worse. As we look into two threats facing his regime at the company, the tech industry at large, and the consequences of his actions. Starting with the external threats to Twitter, which were created by Musk himself. When Elon first announced that he was gonna be buying Twitter, he made one thing clear. Free speech will reign supreme. His motivation for buying the platform was that he saw Twitter as a town square where people should be able to talk about anything and everything within reason. While he was cagey about saying what exactly that meant, it seemed pretty obvious that Musk was aiming to reduce the moderation of content on the platform. He went further when he took over a few weeks ago, tweeting that comedy was legal again on the platform, and while some accounts were banned for making fun of the new CEO under his own name, it's seems like he's staying true to his word for now. Use of racial slurs have spiked by 500% since the takeover. This is in spite of the fact that Musk has already committed to creating a content moderation council of some sort, and the council will have a diverse membership of races, faiths, and backgrounds. This news from the council was undercut by the fact that just this week, Musk restored the accounts of some of the worst people on the platform. It started with a poll where Musk tried to find out if users were interested in unbanning Donald Trump. The former president edged out a victory there, so Musk is giving the people what they want by reinstating Trump. Now, it looks like giving the people what they want comes with a price. Advertisers who were operating on Twitter were already wary of the things Musk was promising, and maybe they were hoping that those were all bluffs. Can't blame them. We were hoping the same thing. But now that Musk has started putting people like Trump and the recently banned Kanye West, among others, back on the platform, advertisers are starting to act on their fears. Among the brands that are pulling their advertising from the platform are Volkswagen, Pfizer, General Motors, and Audi. And it's about to get worse. IPG and Havas, two of the biggest advertising holding companies, are advising their clients to abandon ship as well. This is really bad news for Twitter, as the platform counted on advertising for 90% of its revenue. For a company that, in Musk's own words, was losing $4 million a day, spurning the source of 90% of its revenue doesn't sound like a very good idea. But hey, we don't run an electric car company or a spacefaring company, and Musk runs one of each. The only logic we can see in what he's doing is that his goal is to go back to the days of Trump presidency, where the president's tweets accounted for a whole lot of the engagement on the platform. But it's worth noting that things can still get worse from here. Advertisers, you see, won't be the ones to decide Twitter's fate. Coming up, let's turn to Google and Apple, who hold Twitter's life in their hands. Why those two companies? Is Google planning to take a second shot at Google Plus? No, thankfully. But in a way, these two companies are the most powerful entities in today's tech landscape, and it all has to do with the App Store and the Play Store. Whatever your opinions on this, the fact is that if you can't get your app on at least one of these two stores, you basically have no foothold in this smartphone world. Consider the fact that Parler, Trump's attempt to replace his Twitter account, is struggling to build followers thanks in part to it being shut out of the Play Store. If Twitter were to get banned on these app stores, it'd be game over for them. Like, there's nothing that Twitter could do about it even if they wanted to. What's the alternative way to install an app? Sure, Android allows for alternate app marketplaces and even sideloading, but the average Twitter user is never going to bother with any of that. As for iOS, even these these options don't really exist on their operating system, so Twitter would completely lose its iPhone users. It might sound crazy to think these stores would ban Twitter of all things, but you know, if Twitter does become the site for fear-mongering, hate, and toxicity, they might just do it. These companies wouldn't want the stench of Twitter to rub off on them after all. Moving on, Twitter had staff who could solve all of this, but they've all been fired. Musk has gone on somewhat of a rampage through the workforce. The the new CEO is apparently making good on his promise to fire 75% of the company's staff. Of the 7,500 employees that Musk inherited from Twitter's old management, half of them were fired and another 1,200 have resigned. You can't blame them for resigning. As their new boss gave them plenty of reasons to cut their losses and scram, he made it clear to the staff he kept after his first round of firing that they can look forward to a hard corporate culture, similar to the ones he runs at Tesla and Spain.
SpaceX. Among other things, he was bringing an end to remote work and demanding far more hours in the work week. That's what led the 1,200 employees to nope out of the company. These shocks to the company's workforce were so severe that Twitter had to shut its offices down for a day recently. Internal reports from the company suggested that it wasn't just a staff exodus that led to the shutdown of the offices. Things had gotten so crazy that Musk was genuinely afraid resigning employees would screw things up on their way out. This might just be one of the most damning aspects of Musk's tenure at the company. Now, there are many ways that this firing spree can come back to bite Musk. Twitter needs people to run the company, and the fewer staff they have, the harder it's going to be on the ones who are left. The thing is, Elon Musk wasn't the first person at Twitter to realize that there was a cost problem at the company. They already knew that, but still chose to keep those 7,500 people. There had to be a reason why Twitter was swimming in the red for the sake of those employees. The company has already started to feel the burn of losing so much talent. They've sent emails offering ex-employees to come back and generally asking questions about Twitter's code, which gives us an idea of where most of the job cutting has been happening. But you can't ask an ex-employee to support you for free, and you definitely shouldn't expect them to come back after being summarily fired in the first place. What Twitter should also expect now is an attrition of whoever they have left. The 1,200 employees that resigned? That's only the beginning. Folks who think they can last under the Musk regime will give in as time goes on, and Twitter will continue to bleed staff. That will be made worse by the fact that in 2022, it's a worker's market in the tech industry. Highly qualified personnel with experience at Twitter can have their pick of jobs right now, and Musk isn't doing much to create any loyalty. Finally, let's consider Twitter's future in light of all this. Honestly, there doesn't seem to be a way for Twitter to recover from this tailspin, even if Elon decides to take it easier on the staff at Twitter. He still has to deal with the fact that he's scared off Twitter's biggest source of revenue. And they won't just come back the minute Musk decides to say, reban Trump and the others. What he's shown to advertisers and other partners is that he's an unstable leader, and his time at Twitter will be chaotic and unpredictable. Could Musk sell Twitter off again? That's gonna be tough. The man was forced to go into some serious debt to acquire Twitter in the first place, and he'll have a hard time paying it off without the platform. He'll have a hard time paying off his debts with the platform, but that's just the bind he's gotten himself into. However, the bigger reason why he won't sell Twitter is that he can't. Everyone except for him knew that he was overpaying for the company that struggles to turn a profit, and he really shouldn't count on anyone else in the tech world to make the same mistake he did. So it looks like the two of them are locked in a death spiral. No one knows what'll happen to Elon Musk when all is said and done, but we may well be seeing the end of days at Twitter. That's it for today's video. What do you think of Elon Musk's actions at Twitter? Is he risking a ban from Google and Apple app stores? And where do you think this will all end? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.